I have been making my own art journals and my own sketchbooks for going on three years now. And I can certainly say that I've learned a whole lot in those years. And so I really want to share with you today everything that I've learned that I wish I knew when I first started making books. And I also want to share with you some great news about a journal that I have made, especially with my own designs. So first we should get started with the supplies that we're going to be using. Now, the very first and most important part, of course, is the paper that you're going to be using. What I have here is some cardstock, mostly because I plan on using quite a bit of ink and I want paper that will handle it a little bit better than just printer paper. But I also don't want something as heavy as watercolor paper. So that's what I'll be using. And now this brown paper that you see here, this is actually a type of cardboard. And it's actually not necessary for you to use this cardboard. You can always use something different. Now this is for making the covers. You can just glue together some pieces of paper and I can show you that later. Now the other thing that I do want here is some pretty paper. You could also use cloth as well. And this paper is going to be for the covers as well. That's why I have two sheets of these. Now something that I, ne I don't like to skip is this kind of string this is waxed string it is nylon i do believe you can also find this in a more natural fiber if that's what you like but this nylon string is very strong and because it's waxed it actually does a great job of staying in place while you're working with your pages here i have a white version and a gray version you can get them in all sorts of colors and these are actually very affordable if you go online and look for spools of these. So this is great for using. You can always use regular string though if you want to. Now the next thing that was very important for me is using one of these curved needles. You can also find these as upholstery needles. And it is really important for the type of stitching that I'm going to do to use one of these curved needles. And throughout this video, if you're ever wondering what the supplies are or where to find them, I will make sure to link in the description so that you can go check them out or just take a look at them so you really know what they are. And this is one of those particular tools that is going to be very specific to bookmaking. See this right here? This is a type of awl, and it is used for punching holes in your material. And this one that I have here, I want to show it to you. It is very long and pointed, very needle-like. So you'll see it's actually very similar to the needle that we're going to be using. I also have another one that is actually a, a pottery and ceramics tool. This is a needle tool. These are very similar. This is actually the kind of tool that you do want because I'm, I have received a tool for punching holes that isn't very good for book binding. And it looks more like this. This came in a set that I got last year. And it doesn't really work very well for bookbinding. The holes it makes are too big. This is actually more for working with leather or upholstery or anything that's kind of bigger or bulkier. So you don't really want an awl like that. You want one that's long and needle-like, like this one. And I will link this in the description as well if you want to check it out. So now that you have that, the other thing that we want to talk about briefly, of course, is good scissors. For a while, I did just use my regular scissors, but I needed really sharp ones to make sure that I can make good cuts, both in the paper and in the fabric. And as far as the glue is concerned, when you're first getting started, it's okay to use just your regular school glue because you're just experimenting or you're just trying things out. But uh, you may want to consider eventually getting not just to Elmer's glue or anything like that, but you want to get a PVA glue that is made for bookbinding, really only because you want a glue that is more flexible because you're going to put it on the spine of your book and you want it to be very flexible. I know that it has other, other qualities to it that some people find very important, like that it's pH neutral or that it lasts longer and it doesn't it it doesn't degrade over time but i don't have those particular needs i just want it to be flexible so that it works on that binding 
And so speaking of the, of the spine and the binding, right here, I'm going to show you the type of fabric that I use for the spine. And what I use is just some muslin. And you can actually go out and buy specific cloth that is made for book binding. That's fine. But you can use anything you can see here. I just added some of the muslin. And if you look closely at this tiny book that I'm holding, I also added something called headbands, which I won't be adding to the book that we're making today, but that is also an option in case you want something like that. So here you, I also have a sample of cotton. This is a batik, so it has really nice patterns on it. I love using these on the spines like I did on this book right here, and it looks gorgeous and it works great. So pretty much any kind of fabric that you have will basically work, especially with the method that I'm going to show you today. You can use just about anything, like denim, or if you have old fabric from old clothes that you want to repurpose, this is a great opportunity for that. Here I just have some more scraps. Because this doesn't use very much fabric, it's really only enough for that spine. I can use just about anything here. One other thing that I'd also like to add is that I do also use this fabric glue. This one is by Elmer's. It's the Craft Bond Fabric and Paper Glue. And I've also used this Fabric Fusion by Aline's. And I do like both of them. They have different qualities, but I am most, most uh, fond of the Elmer's glue. Unfortunately, the price of that one did go up while the Aline's is still fairly well priced. So it's going to come down to you what kind of price point you want and what kind of feel. But usually I use these glues to attach the fabric onto the book once I'm done. So this is incredibly important. You can also use the PVA glue to achieve that. It might take a little longer for it to, to adhere, but you can certainly do that. You don't need to get a special fabric glue in order to do this, but I find that it just helps save a little bit of time and a little frustration just because the glue that I use, the fabric glue, is a little tackier and it just helps things stick on. So what I'm going to show you here are some of the embellishments that I like to use on the covers. Like this one here is just a nice kind of ribbon with some really nice designs on it. And I also have some of this lace. And usually a great place to find these is just at your local craft store. You might find some really pretty things like this. Like this one is essentially a kind of a bridal ribbon. And it's just really nice to add it to the covers. And basically when I go to the store, I just try to find something that looks nice. And then that way I just can come back and experiment putting it on my books. So now that it's finally time to start putting this book together, I really like to get started by folding my pages in half. What I have here is just printer paper sized paper. And so I just fold it and then come over here to my paper cutter and start getting those pages prepared so that now they're ready to go. And I can start joining them to create my signatures. So here I have one sheet and I have a second sheet and I just add a third one. You can add as many pages as you like to your signatures. I think that I prefer it when there's only about three pages. And I would like to add at this point that when I fold my papers, I don't come in with a, with a device or with a tool to flatten down those folds. I actually leave the folds very, very open and, and just naturally pressed uh, only as far as my hand is able to do it. And I will explain further as we go along working with these signatures why it is that I don't press those down. I actually need those to stay open. And besides, I don't really need to do all of that work. And so letting them stay more open, more, in a sense, it looks more fluffy. This is exactly what I want. And it's something that I wish I knew a long time ago with the first dozen or so books that I tried making back in the day, because it's so important for those pages to not be tight. And so I also want to add in right now that when you have all this paper left over and there is quite a bit of paper left over, especially if you're doing some trimming, you're going to end up with all these nifty little, little sheets 
very strangely shaped. And what I like to do with these is I cut them and fold them to make these tiny little books. And these are perfect bound and I can show you in a separate video later how to make these. It's actually very easy. And I just make these tiny little books, which I am now creating a very cute little library of tiny books that I am making. And I'll show you for comparison. These are my three inch by three inch books compared to my teeny tiny books. And then we'll compare that to the one that we're making right now, which is approximately five and a half inches by six inches. So it's not quite a square, but very close to a square. So now let's get started putting these together. So now that we have all of our signatures ready, there is one very simple step that I like to take before I do anything to any of my signatures. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to line them all up and I'm going to take my pencil and very gently make a pencil mark along the outside. And I'm not going to do any cutting or any punching here. This is really just a guide to remind me how my pages are oriented. And so I'm going to go get my awl and start getting ready. I do want something to protect my table. And what I have here is just some foam from a package that I received a few months ago. I just rescued it and glued it onto some, some cardboard. If you don't have any foam or anything like that, you can just glue together a few pieces of cardboard and that will protect your table so that when you're punching through your paper, you don't damage anything. Now I'm going to show you one of my own personal tricks. And again, this is something I wish I'd known a long time ago. So when I punch my holes, I just know that I want them to be one inch apart. It's just what I've tried and I like the best. I just make them an inch apart. It doesn't matter how many of them there are. They're just going to be one inch apart. And I use that in all of my books. So instead of using the ruler, what I've done is I have taken some of that spare cardstock and made for myself this little card with these markings on it, marking those one inches. So there you can see it, it matches up with the ruler. And the reason that I like to make this little card is because when I put the ruler inside, my awl is going to be rubbing up against it. And I don't know if any of you have this, but the feel of metal scraping on metal is not a good feeling, especially when the tool is in your hand. So instead, I just place my little guide here inside of my pages. And then I can just come in and gently press through. You'll also notice that I'm holding the awl at an angle. I'm not pushing straight down. I want to go at about 45 degrees so that I can actually punch through that, that seam exactly through the seam. And this may take some practice. So when you do this, you're going to notice that you might not be punching through perfectly. It's going to come out the side a little bit and you'll need to adjust to the angle of your your awl or your needle, whatever it is that you're using. So here I'm going to use it one more time. And again, all of this is doing is I'm just pressing right next to that little guide that I made. And just pressing it at an angle and there it is. So I really do prefer very much using this instead of just using the ruler directly on the paper. So now we get to do the part of book binding that really makes the book, but it's also the most tedious part. And if you are anything like me, you are going to thoroughly enjoy this part. It does have its difficulties, but it is very rewarding. And as long as you remain patient, then you should be able to get this done in not a lot of time. So here I have my waxed string. Again, this is a nylon string. It is, it is of a nice weight, so it's pretty, pretty thick string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the length of my spine here as my guide. And it essentially is going to be my ruler for this. So what I'm going to do is just measure my string up against the spine 
and I'm going to count out the same number of lengths as the number of signatures that I have. And so for this book, I have 17 signatures because I want to have 100 pages in this book. So 17 signatures gives me exactly 102 sheets or 102 pages, which is exactly what I want. That'll give me a 100 page book. And so I'm just going to count out 17 exactly plus a little extra just to make sure I don't run out. And then I can get threading through my curved needle so that I can get started. If you've done any stitching with anything else, you this is probably going to seem very familiar for you. I know it was for me. I've done a lot of sewing and embroidery in the past, so this was very familiar to me. So in order to get started, I'm going to just pick up my first signature and I'm just going to go inside of it. So from the outside heading inward, I will just stitch through and pull my string through. And I just want to leave a small tail, a couple of inches at least, because I will need to tie this in just a few minutes when I come back around. So now I choose the second hole and I head out through that one. And I am actually going to start attaching the second signature right now. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to use my needle to enter the second hole in the second signature. And then I pull through. And then I'm going to exit the third hole in the second signature and pull through. And I'm only leaving it a little wide so you can see. But now I move back to the first signature and pull through. So if you start to notice, I'm really just sewing these two together. Now I'm going to go to the next hole in the first signature and head out. And I will pull that through. And you guessed it, the next hole that I go into is going to be in the second signature, so right there in front of it. It's going to go right there. And then just go in and pull that through. When you're starting off like this, there's going to be a lot of length and it might get twisted up, but just work with it and be patient. So now I go through the last hole in the second signature. Pull it out. Now the last one that I have here is the very last hole in the first signature and I go in through that one. You may notice that I'm not having too much difficulty sewing through my signatures, but I think that really just comes with a lot of practice. If this is your first time doing this, you may find this a little difficult. So again, be patient with yourself. It may take some practice. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull this a little tighter only because I left it nice and wide so that you could see what was happening. So now I'm just going to pull on it. I'm not going to pull too hard though, just, just a little bit so that it's, it's on there. But don't pull it too tight because you can tear the paper. So now here's what I'm going to do. Where I ended, I'm going to come back out and go through both signatures. So essentially I'm just stitching back where I had already stitched. So I'm through here. This is the back of the second. Now I go through both. Come out the other side. And I pull it through. So there we have it. And now I'm going to go into the next hole right here and go through both signatures. Perfect. So once I'm there, I'm going to pull on that and bring all of that string through. And now I just have one hole left, but I'm not going to go through both. I'm only going to go through one, just the one right there. And I'm going to bring that through. And 
And so it's very important here that you don't pull these strings too tight. You will tear the paper and also we need just that little bit of slack for when we fold them this way because we are going to be working with those. So again, make sure you're not pulling it too tight. I've noticed in so many others that they like to pull it tight, but here we're just going to make a square knot just like that and pull it a little bit just to make sure it's on there, but not too tight. So if you notice that in other videos they tell you to pull it really tight, I am going to tell you the opposite. Do not pull it tight. We want things to be nice and fluffy here, nice and loose and gentle. So here's what we're going to do when we add that third signature. So we are going to bring that third signature in and lay it down next to the other. So here's mine. Notice here are my signatures. And I'm going to take my needle and right in front of it, I will go in through that third signature. And if you have seen any other tutorials or any other videos for this, I am following the same kind of stitching. This is very, very much a standard kind of stitching. So now I take the needle and I go out through the second hole and I pull my string through. And sometimes it gets a little tangled, especially when it's very, very long like this. So I just have to be patient and go and untangle it. And then I can keep pulling that string through. So now that it's there, I'm going to pull on it just a little. I don't want to, I don't want to break the paper. I just want it to be in the right spot. So right there. So I'm going to show you how, how I think of this when I stitch. So I'm working from here towards the left. And because of that, when I put my needle, I'm going to hook it in the opposite direction. So my needle is going to enter the previous two signatures right behind that string right there that's holding them together. So right here, again, I hooked in the opposite direction in which I'm headed. And I just pull that through. And there it is. Pull it through. And now to complete this stitch, I'm going to go back into the same hole I just came out of on the current signature. And so I go through and I just bring it in and pull the rest of that string in. There we go. Now we're just going to continue this way through the rest of the signature. I'm going to come out in the next hole. And bring that string through. So again, I'm working towards the left. So I'm going to hook the needle in the opposite direction. And so my needle just goes in there between the previous two signatures in the opposite direction, like that. And once it's in there, I take it and I just pull my string through. And this is exactly why that curved needle is so important. I have done this with straight needles and they work just fine, but it, it's a little more frustrating and I'd like to just avoid that frustration here. So I just go back into the hole in the current signature, same one, and I just go inside and pull all the way through and tug on it just a little bit. It doesn't have to be incredibly tight. Come out the next one. And you do want to check the back Sometimes it'll snag on something and you may not notice until it's too late. So make sure that you're checking. So again here, I'm going to put my needle between the previous two signatures in the opposite direction in which I am working. So this way, and I just pull through, pull my string through, tug a little. It doesn't have to be super tight. 
and then go back through the same one in my current signature and pull it through. So there we go. So now that we are here at the last one, it's going to be just slightly different because this is where we will need to turn around so that we can head back and do the rest of the signatures. So when you get to the end and you exit your current signature, you will start it the same way as all of your others. And you are going to insert the needle between the previous two in the opposite direction in which you're working and you pull that through. So this is still the same. There's nothing different here. So bring that through. And what I like to do, it's pretty simple, but it's a little different than what I've seen other people do. And this really just works for me is I'm just going to tug on it. And then my needle, I'm going to put it in between my two current signatures. So there you see, I have it. And what I really need to do is kind of tug on that string so that it's not loose and then just pull on it until it closes that loop. So I've gone through there once and now I'm going to go through that exact same spot one more time. I'm going to make sure I don't get anything tangled up and then I just pull my string through. So that's it. That's all that I do. And I am done with that one. There are no knots here, nothing special. This is the perfect way that this has worked for me. I have tried dozens of different ways and this is the one that I like the most. And so here you see, this is the next one. And I am going to take a little bit of time to continue adding these and just stitching them through. This can take a little bit of time, especially if you have as many signatures as I have, maybe about half an hour or so, maybe more. It just depends on how I'm feeling. But this is a great time to kind of just spend some time alone, meditating and just stitching and making sure that you are taking your time and really appreciating the materials that you're working with. And so here, this is what I have. I'm just gonna show you one more time as I go through, I'm working towards the right and I'm going to put my stitch in the opposite direction. So here are my previous two signatures. In goes the needle behind that stitch. Go in the opposite direction now and I pull it through. Being careful not to snag it on anything. I pull it just a little so it's taut and then I go back in. So this is all you're going to do for the entire rest of this block. And so as I get to the end here, again, I'm making sure that everything is in the right place without pulling too hard. And when I exit that last hole, I'll show you one more time how I deal with that last stitch. So and now that I'm here, I start it off in the usual way. And what I'm going to do is insert the needle behind the stitch on the previous two signatures. So that's right here. It's a little difficult to see, but it's right there. So behind the previous two, and this is just attaches it. Okay, so now that it's attached, I go behind the current two so right here and usually once i go in there it loosens that stitch a little so before i pull it all the way through i just tug on the string and make sure that it's taut or taut so there it is and then i go through that same one one more time making sure i don't get anything tangled up i don't make any knots i just go through there a total of three times through those through that area just make sure i get this out of the way so there we go and that usually does it for me it works perfectly for my purposes gives me just enough space so there we go that is how the first four signatures look and i'm just going to continue doing this for the rest of those signatures until i get my block ready so while i do that i'd like to just show you that journal that I made with my very own designs. 
I'm so proud of it. I've actually been working on it for months, just trying to figure out how I wanted to make it. And so this is what it looks like. This is just the prototype, but I'm working on getting these ready. I'm thinking of making about just a dozen or so just to begin with, just to see if anybody would like one. And so I'm hoping in the next few weeks, I will be sharing with you some links to my store so that you can go check it out. And it does have my own artwork on the covers and it is made with watercolor paper. So it's going to be a very wonderful book. I'm so proud of the design. And so far it's looking absolutely gorgeous. And I hope that some of you are able to get a few of these and let me know what you think about them. So that's the exciting news that's going to be coming up in the next few weeks. Been working on a lot of stuff lately, especially these books. And I just, I just love the way they came out. It's so perfect with this binding and the embellishments. So I hope you like it too. So now I'm here at the end and I have joined all of my signatures. And it took me about 30, 40 minutes. I did like, to, I did take my time quite a bit. It was a lot of signatures, but I'm here at the end now. And I'd like to show you what I do at the very last one. I know I've seen people do all sorts of things here when they finish their binding in order to close it off. But I'm going to show you that this is all that I do as I get to the end here. And I'm going to do almost exactly what I usually do. It's only going to be slightly different. So when I exit that last hole, I am going to do the usual thing and go through the previous two so that now it's attached. Just tug on it a tiny bit. And now that I'm there, this part is also similar. I go behind the current signature stitch. So this is the same, but I'm going to change it up right here at the end. So instead of pulling that all the way through, I'm going to just make sure there's a loop right here, just a little loop. Make sure it's tight. And I'm going to use that loop and bring my fingers through and create this loop right here. And I'm going to pull on that. So what I've essentially created is a disappearing knot. If I were to tug on the working end of this, this would completely disappear, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm gonna take the working end and pull it through that loop. And I'm going to pull on it until that closes up. And now this is a closed knot. And so I'm just going to come in with my nails and just kind of push on it a little bit so that it goes down into place. And once that's done, you can see right here, this is where it's going to get glued when I'm done. So I'm happy with the positioning of that. This is pretty good. And now I can just trim the string down to size. So this book is going to have 100 sheets. So essentially it's going to be a 200 page book. So that's why you can see it is a very wide page block. This is exactly the look that I was going for. I wanted it to be a little wide and have lots of space inside of it. You can see all of that space in there. I did not flatten down my pages because I know that a lot of you are just like me and you like to glue things in. You like to paint. You like to attach things and add things. And it is so important to have that little bit of extra room in there so that we can play around with those pages. And so this is how I made this one. So in this next stage, something that I learned to do after a while, after a lot of frustration, was to add these little spacers inside of my signatures when I move on to the next phase, which is the phase of preparing the spine of the book. And so I'm adding these spacers in. It's just some folded cardstock because, again, I don't want that to kind of get squashed when I go to clip my my pages together or or somehow attach them or hold them down. I don't want that area to get pressed down so much that I no longer have those gaps. So I'm adding the spacers and I've seen a lot of different ways to hold down the block while you're working with the spine. 
I have chosen to use two pieces of hardwood. And so these are the pieces that I have. And what I'm going to do is once I have my spacers in, in all of my, my signatures inside of my block, I'm going to put a piece of wood on each side. And I'm going to try to line everything up make sure that I, the shape of it didn't get tweaked or that my spacers didn't fall or anything like that. And I'm just checking to make sure everything's in the right place. There was one occasion in which I wasn't very careful and my entire block kind of came out of alignment. So it wasn't, it wasn't flush. And I realized it only once it was too late. And I ended up making this wonky little book. And I learned a lot from that experience. So I'm much more careful now, making sure that everything looks nice and straight before I commit to it. And so I just have these very large clamps here. I wanted to make sure they were big enough for these, these thicker books that I like to make. And I have another clamp that I'm going to put on the end here. And these are all easily found at a hardware store. Just these clamps and little pieces of wood like this. And so once it's in there, Here you can see the spine. And it is very important for me to place it exactly the way that I placed it because I am going to be doing something to the spine that I think a lot of other people skip. And again, this is one of those things that I wish I'd learned because I just, over the years, I saw so many different tutorials and a lot of people just skip straight to gluing here and I'm going to show you why I'm not going to glue right now. See right here? There are these very deep ridges between the signature or between the signatures. And those deep ridges are going to hold a lot of glue. And I don't want that. So in order to stop that from happening, I'm going to find something, pretty much it can be anything, so that I can press those down on the spine and flatten them out. And so what I have here is just this really pretty stone. And I really just like it because it's smooth. I have very many of these that were gifted to me and that I inherited from family. And this is the one that I like the most. It's very smooth. And I just use it to press the edge. I have in the past used a small hammer. A small hammer works just fine. And other types of rocks work really well too. You can sometimes use a, a Sharpie, or as I'm using here, you can use one of these brushes like the back of it, and you can press down along the spine like this and push it down, and it flattens it out. So I'm doing this in order to get rid of all of those ridges. So this is what it looks like. It's flattened down now. So now when I add the glue, it's not going to go into those, those little valleys and truthfully in my own opinion this has made all the difference in the world again i know that a lot of people skip this step but i have found it to be so very very important and so i make sure i go through and it really only takes just a couple of minutes to flatten all of those down and now they are perfectly ready for the next step So now I'm going to move forward with the next step. And this is a pretty standard step in a lot of bookmaking or in a lot of bookbinding. And so I'm just going to go ahead and finally add all of my glue. And again, this is the PVA glue. When you're experimenting, feel free to use whatever glue you want. This is just a nice one when you're finally ready to commit to using a, a more flexible and long lasting glue. You can use PVA glue and I'm being fairly generous when I go around the spine and add all that glue. So I'm just going through and doing that. And as you see, I'm just using my finger. I don't mind using my hand to add the glue. I know some people don't like the feel of it, but I'm okay with it. So I'm just going to go through and add a very generous amount, not skipping the, the area where I stitched. I want to make sure that, that I get glue in that as well. And so by the time I get to the end of that, 
pretty much the glue will be just a little tacky and it will be ready for me to add some cloth to the spine. And as I mentioned earlier, the cloth that you use, you can get this special kind that you can find online or at a special store. But what I use is just some simple muslin or some simple kind of fabric that you can get anywhere or any kind of leftovers that you have. You can just take a little piece and you're going to cut it down to size and just set it on there gently. So what I do is I just tap it down really gently with my finger. And as I do that, a little bit of the glue does come through the fabric and it gets on my finger and I make sure to wipe that off. Because if my finger remains tacky, then I kind of pull it up a little and I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I pat that down so that everything is glued on. This fabric that I'm adding here, it's just going to make the spine much sturdier. Things won't wiggle around anymore. There is a certain type of book binding where nothing is added to the spine and all of the stitching is exposed. And it looks very pretty and I've tried doing that with some of my books, but I haven't really liked it. So now that the spine is taken care of and is set aside to dry, what I'm going to start concentrating now on is the cover. And here is the cardboard that I have. I did purchase these and I think it was a set of, I think a hundred of them. And you can also use paper. You don't have to use this cardboard. You can take paper scraps and glue them together. I usually find that about five sheets of paper glued together will work. But this cardboard that I have found, it is a little too flimsy to just use for the covers. So what I do with it is I fold it in half and glue it together. So here you see what it results in. And this is good enough for the covers. It doesn't have to be incredibly firm. It just has to be firm enough. And so that's what I have here. I have two of them. And I did just cut them to the exact same size as my page block. So you don't need to do any kind of special sizing or add or subtract anything. It is perfectly fine if you just use the exact same size. So that's what I have here. And so I'm just choosing where I'm going to glue it onto my nice paper. It's just some scrapbook paper. And I'm going to just cover that whole side in some glue to get it ready. And I'm going to use a brush. And this is actually going to be the very last time that I use this brush because it is a very annoying brush, but I want to show it to you so that you look out for this when you are choosing a brush to do this with. And so this brush does a great job of spreading the glue around and you do want to spread the glue around, especially on your covers. You want to make sure that you have full adhesion on these. So make sure that you do that. But notice what it's doing. It is losing some of its bristles to the cardboard and that is very annoying. You don't want to have anything like that. So don't do what I did. Try to get yourself a brush that won't do this. And so I had to go through and pick those out and then smooth the glue out again. And now I can actually set it down onto my paper. And so now that I have it on there, I just make sure that there is some paper on the edge because I will need that excess to fold over. And it's not a lot. It can be anywhere between half an inch to an inch, depending on, on what your preference is. You just need to be able to fold that excess over once the glue dries. So just go around checking it. If you want to, you can use a, I think it's called a bone tool, or you can use a marker or this thing that I have here. It came with another, with something else, just something to smooth it out. And so specifically for the covers, it is very important to make sure that you have a nice smooth adhesion. This is the one place where you don't want to, you don't want to skip any steps. So make sure that the glue covers everything and make sure that your cover is on there really nicely. Otherwise you're going to end up with these weird bubbles in your covers and you don't want that. So I'm just coming in and trimming it. And so because of the way that I make my books, I'm actually going to trim the paper right here up against the edge of the cardboard. 
because of the way that I make my books, I don't need to fold this over. It can be just like that. So I'm just going to trim it there and I'm only going to be working with the three edges that remain. And so because I'm going to be folding that paper over, I'm just going to trim it right here. Make sure I don't trim right up against the cardboard, leave some space. So like so. Leave just a little bit of space on that corner. If you cut it too tightly right here, you're going to end up with, with some of that cardboard exposed, and it's not going to look pretty. So make sure that you leave some of that paper right there. And so now I can just come through and I'm going to glue these down. And again, make sure you take your time. These are your covers. They are the most obvious part of the book. So make sure that it looks nice. With the first few books that I made, I didn't really take my time. I just kind of was a little sloppy making these. And I re definitely regretted that later when I noticed that, that the covers didn't look the way I wanted to or just they looked sloppy. And that's just my own personal opinion. It's, as usual, we are all our own harshest critics. And so when I make the books now, especially if I'm going to make them for other people, like this one here, I'm going to make this book available on my, in my shop once it's done. I want to make sure that it's done the best that I can do it, make sure everything's glued down nicely. And so here it is, making sure the glue is on every little, little spot. And that there's full adhesion and that I can press it down all the way. And if you're going to be making these books just for yourself and you you don't plan on selling them, then it's a great opportunity to just take your time. You don't need to rush. Just go slowly. And so here you see I'm tucking in those little those little edges there. I just press them in. So just take your time and pay attention to all those little details. I figure that if I didn't want to make these, I could just go and buy one and it would be easy enough. But that's not what this is about. It's about having something to keep my, my mind busy, something to troubleshoot, something to experiment with. And this has been a great, a great hobby for me. I really do love making these. It's, there's just something about it and seeing it all come together. And of course, any of you who, who visit my channel know that I draw a lot. I draw a whole lot. And so it's really important for me to have journals ready without me having to go to the store all the time and just buy journal after journal after journal. It's going to end up being quite a bit. And so I prefer to just make them myself. So here we have the front cover. It's all ready to go. And now we can move on to the next step. So once I have both of my covers ready, and I have them right here, so I made sure that they were cut from slightly different angles on the pages so that they didn't look identical, and that's really just something that I like to do. But here they are. I made sure they were nice and flat and ready to go, and now I can actually come back to my, my block here, and I can start trimming things down a little bit. So I'm just going to snip that string and maybe remove some of those little little fibers that are on the edge of that cloth and just make sure that everything is going to fit nicely. And then I can just come in with my glue. And so I am going to show you something that is going to be just slightly different. Now I'm just going to glue down this right here and I'm going to show you that it's okay if the glue is just like that. I don't have to come in with a brush every single time and get it to look quote unquote perfect. And I'm actually going to do this with the entire, the entire surface of this page here. So this is the very last page of the block. And now that this fabric is glued down, I'm just going to check that it's all the way down. I'm going to come in and just 
add a glue all over it just directly on there notice I didn't even put a sheet to protect if you if you really do feel like you're going to get your glue all over the place then please take a spare sheet of paper and put it behind this I'm not worried about that because I'm not going to come in with any kind of brush or anything I'm just going to do what I'm doing here and I'm going to apply the glue in all these little circles and swirls and that's going to distribute it because I'm working on the inside of my cover I'm not worried about there being perfectly full coverage I'm just wanting to adhere this to the cover and as long as everything is fairly well distributed then I don't have to worry about it so once I've done that I'm just going to spread around the glue right here a little bit and then I line up my cover and press it down only very gently not too much so that way I can open it and I can realign if necessary it might not be fully centered so I'm just going to move it a tiny bit so you'll probably notice that I am definitely not following the standard procedure for bookmaking I am very much going straight to adding the covers to the book and then worrying about the spine cover and that is just the the order in which I like to make my books I've tried other methods and they do work perfectly fine it's just for some reason this works a lot better for me I like this process a whole lot more and I feel that, like it's a little bit easier to attach the covers this way when I worry too much about adding extra pages in or gluing more things in it just uh, gets to be a little bit too much for me so this way I just worry about adding those covers in like this and then I come in if I need to I can use a tool to push against the page really press it down on there when it comes to polyvinyl glue it is very good to add some pressure to it make sure that it has good adhesion and then all I want to do is just set it down and give it a few minutes to rest and so once both of my covers are glued on and so they are here I'm going to go find some fabric and in this case I decided to go with some denim and it's just a fairly light denim and what you see here is that I've cut a piece of it that is just wide enough to go around my spine so this one is exactly three inches wide and I did make sure that it was square so I wanted that to be nicely lined up and you can do this all sorts of ways you can make yourself a template out of cardstock or paper and use that and so what I'm going to do here is that very edge that's going to go on the bottom I'm going to just glue that I could stitch it I have done that with some books I could do that in this case I'm just going to save myself a little trouble and I'm just going to glue it with that fabric glue that I have and you'll notice that I'm using the top of my book as a guide this will help me make sure that my shape is square and what I mean by square it's to make sure that those angles aren't wonky and so once I have it set I take it off of the book and I use my table surface to press it down further because some of that glue does come off and I'll show you here how I deal with the other end so again I'm on top of the book and I'm just going to add some of that fabric glue very gently I want to make sure that I don't push it through and then end up getting the book dirty if you're worried about something like that you can add another piece of paper over your cover to protect it so that you don't get anything seeping through but with this glue that I'm using it doesn't seep through unless I press really hard so I'm just going to push it down very gently just to make sure I have the right shape so this is going to ensure I have the exact length and that the edge is square and once I have that and I know that it's where I want it so there it is now I can move the book aside and just keep pressing it down just on my on my table and so once everything is pressed down nice and firm and this really only takes a couple of minutes and the glue is is firmly set for now it isn't fully cured but it is set I can come in and just trim that excess 
And so once I get that trimmed nicely, I am ready to move on to my next stage. So when I want to attach this cover to the spine, I'm actually going to be a bit unscientific about it. And I'm just going to hold it up against the spine the way you see here. And when I hold it there, I'm going to find where it's centered. And once I find that perfect spot where it's centered, I'm going to check both edges. And it just takes a few seconds, as you see here. And I'm going to hold it and just check that it is as centered as it can be. And once I've found that perfectly centered location, I'm just going to hold it gently. And that way I'm just going to turn the book over. And once I turn it over just like this, I can just hold down that edge exactly where it was. And now I can just use that to mark very gently with my pencil where the edge of that lies. And so now I know exactly the area where I need to add my glue so that I can adhere this. And so I can just set that aside for the time being. And I'm going to take my glue. And again, this is the fabric glue. You can also try this with your PVA glue. That will work just fine. You might just find that it's going to work just a little differently when it comes to drying time or adhesion time. This glue is incredibly tacky. And so it really isn't very forgiving. If I end up needing to pull the fabric off to reposition it, I have to re-glue the surface all over again in order to do that. So what I do here is I'm very, very careful because I don't want to have to do this again. And I lay down my fabric exactly where I know it needs to go and very carefully line it up, make sure it's in the right place. And then I start pressing it down. And it really doesn't take very long for it to get full adhesion. And I could still remove it. So that's, that's a good thing. I could remove it if I need to right now, but I don't want to. I want to make sure I do it on the first to go. If you don't like the, the idea that you can't really fix it, then you might want to try the other glue, the Aline's Fabric Fusion, instead of the one that I'm using. And so as you see, I just turned it over. And I'm just marking the edge of where the fabric is going to go. Just give myself a little bit of a guide right there. And so now I'm going to use that to add the glue onto my back cover. And I want to make sure that I get some pretty good coverage with that glue as well, because like I said, I'm not going to do this again. I want to make sure I get it on the first try. And I also want to make sure that there is good coverage of glue on the very edges. So right here on the edge. And then the rest of it, I can just spread it out with the tip of the, the applicator there. It doesn't have to be brushed on or anything. I can just apply it like this. So there we go. It's a good, decent amount. And now I can set it aside. And when I bring that fabric in, I'm actually going to tug on it just a little. Make sure it's, it's pulled nice and tight. And again, I'm not going to press it until I know that it's exactly in the right place. So I'm just going to tug and then place it. I notice that if it's too loose, it doesn't look as pretty. So I make sure that it's nice and tight like that. So there we have it. And I do not want to trim those little fibers right now. I will come through and trim them once the glue is set a little more. So here you have it. It's pretty close to being centered. And now we can move on to the final stages. So now we are finally at the end here and we are just going to be adding a few embellishments. And in truth, these are not necessary, not in the slightest, but this is our own precious handmade journal. We are going to be spending a whole lot of time with this. So we do want to add some pretty things, some nice things to those covers that are just going to make us fall in love with that book. And so this is what I like to do. I go and find some lace or some ribbon like the one that you see here. And this one is absolutely perfect. It is just perfect because of the measurements. It seems like each of these little motifs measures one inch 
and it happens to be the exact same length as my book. And so it's like, it's just calling out to me, saying that it needs to be on this book. And so I trimmed it to exactly six motifs because my cover is six inches long. And I am going to use my fabric glue again, and I'm going to dab it around along the edges very carefully. I can make a little bit of a mess. I'm not worried about where this lands. I just want to make sure I get lots of little dabs around the edges and a little bit on the inside. And I'll just carefully work my way all the way to the edge. And I'm trying to work a little bit quickly because if I do wait too long, this might not adhere. And so I'm ending up with some glue on my fingertips and that's going to be okay. I do have to pick it up in just a second and try to position it. There have been some in the past that I did not position very well and I learned from those. And so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to start guiding it along the bottom and very gently set it down without pressing it. So I'm not pressing it at all yet. And since I know I need to move it a tiny bit, I just tug on it. And now it's in the right place. And now I can start pressing it down. And you'll see there's a lot of glue everywhere. You can see that it's white. And that's actually perfect for me. I can see where the glue is at, where I have adhesion. And it will dry clear once it is set. And I usually think of it as being ready overnight. And so once that's ready, I can add some to the back of it as well. And then it is ready to go. So here is what it looks like. Everything is in place. If I really need to, I can seal the covers. I don't usually do that. And so here's the back cover with some ribbon on the back. And here is the front complete and ready to go. It is a hundred page book. I hope you really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. And if you try making one of these, please let me know. There are a lot of steps and I tried to share with you all of the little tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. And hopefully this helps you. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section. I will do my best to answer and to help you out in case you are trying to make a book like this. So thank you so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun. I hope you have a lot of fun making your own journals. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.